Welcome to all. Today we will discuss on necrotizing fasciitis. As an emergency physician, usually we get many patients in ER with SIRS, right? Most of the time, we won't be able to find a focus of infection. Patient might have temperature, patient might have increased uh, pulse rate, the patient might be in shock also, but there will not be any localizing features. There won't be any cough, there won't be any vomiting or loose stools or any burning maturation or a very evident abscess sources or bed source. So most of the time we think that this is going to be a systemic infection without any localized cause, right? But what we usually miss is to specifically look for something called as necrotizing fasciitis. Why is it very important from emergency point of view? So this necrotizing fasciitis, if not recognized at the very early stage, it's going to kill your patient with a mortality rate up to 50 to 60 percentage. The more earlier you identify this, the better is going to be the outcome, okay? So this is going to be a very dire emergency. Your patient can lose his or his life or an entire limb even, okay? So let us discuss on necrotizing fasciitis. So apart from the introduction and epidemiology, we'll discuss about the etiology, pathophysiology, the classification, signs and symptoms, diagnostics, and how to treat. So, introduction. The necrosing fasciitis originates from the Greek word necron, means dead, and from the Latin word fasciitis, meaning bundle. Okay. So, this necrotizing fasciitis is a very aggressive disease. It's even said to be caused by something called as a flesh eating bacteria, which is known to the mankind since 2000 years. The NIST necrotizing fasciitis, in a broad spectrum, if you see, it comes under the necrotizing SSTI, that is skin and soft tissue infections, which could be a necrotizing dermatitis, necrotizing fasciitis or necrotizing myositis, right? So this forms a part of this broad spectrum of necrotizing soft tissue infections. All these things share the common signs, symptoms, etiology, pathophysiology and treatment, only the presentation is going to differ. So all this NSTI occur in the soft tissue compartment from the dermis down to including the muscular layer. Why this is significant is when you physically see the patient, you are examining the patient limbs, we usually see the epidermal layer, right? So externally the patient may be completely normal, but something will be going on under the skin at the level of dermis and subcutaneous layers. So which we usually miss out and that which we are missing out is going to be very aggressive and it's not going to be amenable with your antibiotics. So it's going to be very, very significant. You need to literally examine the patient and then identify this. So this NF specifically spreads along the facial planes. In the total of SSTI, this necrosing fasciitis spreads through the facial planes at a very aggressive rate. And just by antibiotics, you are not going to cure this disease at all. You need to have a surgical team. You need to evaluate an early debridement is necessary. So this is a true surgical emergency. Okay. So the mortality increases significantly if at all you are delaying the surgical debridement. Okay. This places this as a very, very high thing to get identified in your ER itself. History. Necrotizing fasciitis is known to the mankind for more than two millennia. The first account is ascribed by Hippocrates. He referred this to as complicated erysipelas disease. 500 before Christ and the specific disease manifestation what he described is similar to what we now identify as necrotizing fasciitis. Later, in 17th century, a chief surgeon Claude Collis described a condition which is again consistent with what we now see as necrotizing fasciitis. And at the level of our own American Civil War, Dr. Joseph Johns, a physician, identified a specific bug, a bacillus, as a cause of multiple gangrene. He has documented 2,600 cases of gangrene after this war era. And the weaponry and the physical side, the farmland of the battle, was thought to account for this numerous cases of gas gangrene. And this is one of the largest retrospective studies on gas gangrene. Most of the war victim on the war participant were laid to be gangrenous. They lost their limb and most of them lost their life. And the mortality was up to 50 percentage. A variant of necrosing fasciitis is the Fournier's gangrene. And it's attributed to Jean Alfred Fournier, a French dermatologist. So Fournier's gangrene is a form of necrosing fasciitis of the perianal perineal and the genital area or the genital area and he has documented the first five cases of necrotizing fasciitis of the perineum in 18th century. So necrotizing fasciitis later became to known as Melanie's gangrene after Dr. Frank L. Melanie, 
who discovered an association between the beta hemolytic streptococcus in 1920. In 1950, it was Dr. Ben Wilson who coined the term necrotizing fasciitis as the most appropriate term. So, if you see throughout history, let it be more than 2000 years or in the recent past where we have a lot of medications, even still the literature documents around 60 percentage of mortality rate because just because of the non-specificity of the symptoms. Usually, they will not complain of that particular symptom etiology for you to focus on necrotizing fasciitis because clinically when you see the patient, the patient might be in cysts but will not have any localizing findings if you don't examine the patient properly. So, this non-specificity can make your early diagnosis difficult and delay the life-saving surgical intervention, emphasizing the importance of accurate and early diagnosis. Now you got a patient, maybe a 60 years old male who is a diabetic who is presenting with a fever and increased respiratory rate and increased heart rate and a minimal shock but there is absolutely no clinical signs to focus anything like no cough, no loose tools, sudden length like that. So how will you suspect that the patient is having necrotizing fasciitis at all? So it is for that reason they have come up with some scoring systems which is called as the NLRINF scoring system which we will see a little later.